Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, or good night, however and whenever you may be listening. Thank you for stopping in once again to another fantabulous episode of the Take It Easy podcast. It is our last football Monday of the season, and oh my God, what a day it was. They did not disappoint, and the playoffs are set in stone now. Uh, We we begin as we do every single week with the forgettable game of the week. I mean, pick your poison on that one. You want to talk about the Jets and the Bills? We can talk about that. We can talk about Chicago-Minnesota. Yeah, both those games existed. Those teams sat their starters. It was Matt Barkley and Sean Mannion that ended up on the losing side, but it doesn't matter because they're locked into their playoff spots. Okay, there we go. We talked about the forgettable game of the week. Now, we can talk about the ridiculous outcomes that happened on Sunday. And there's only one place I want to start. The greatest football team. And when you hear Miami, you're thinking Super Bowl. Because they're the Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins number one. They're the Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins number one. Yes! Ryan Fitz Magic. Brian Flores. The guys who said they were tanking. The guys who thought they had punted on the season at the beginning. Started the year with a minus. I don't even know what it was at the start of the year. Minus 90-something point differential. Minus 180 through four weeks. I don't even know. Something ridiculous. They went into Foxborough with this team and beat Tom Brady. And the Patriots have to go to the wild card for the first time this decade as a result of it. You gotta love it. First time in 10 years New England has to go to the wild card, and they're gonna play the Titans. Tighten up, more on them coming up. And the Dolphins ended the season five and four. At times looked like a very, very respectable football team. It was remarkable what the Dolphins did to close out 2019. Even if it messed up their draft positioning, doesn't matter. What they did this year was incredible. They're still going to end up with, I think, the six of the seven pick. And they showed that they can be a legitimate contender very soon. Tanking costs them a few picks, and they don't get Joe Burrow. Okay? But this was more respectable for the Miami Dolphins. When you talk about what Fitzmagic did this year, and in that game, 300 yards, when you talk about the duo between Preston Williams and Devontae Parker, when you talk about the defense and Eric Rowe and company making big-time stops against the Patriots. Now, I know Brady in the offense, iffy, but when you make big-time plays like that, and get the first win in Foxborough since 2002. That's off the charts in terms of a program builder going into the off season with some momentum. The Dolphins should be back and better than ever come next season. Now, for the Patriots, obviously, I just I want to talk about the Dolphins, but the real impact comes from the Patriots. Because they show the statistic, you have a 71% chance, or I'm sorry, of the Super Bowl champions since the wild card era, I believe that's 1990, 71% had a first round bye and 29% did not. And the Patriots are in some deep, deep trouble now. Because if Brady wants to go to the Super Bowl this year, He's going to have to go through Tannehill. He's going to have to go through Mahomes in Kansas City now. And he's going to have to go through Lamar. 
no chance. The Patriots are like the third or fourth best team in the AFC at this point. No chance now that they don't get that by. Because you could take, you could play it safe and say, New England's going to beat whoever at home. And then you could play, you could play out a New England Baltimore game and say, well, it could go either way. Now you're looking at the Titans at home, which they'll, they'll, we'll talk more about that game as we go. But Kansas City on the road, I was ready to pick Kansas City to beat New England in Foxborough because the Chiefs have played that much better football than the Patriots. Now it's going to Kansas City. That's a six-point swing. I have supreme confidence in the Chiefs that they will beat the Patriots. And we don't even have to talk about Patriots against Baltimore because they're going to lose to the Chiefs beforehand. But in the situation that they don't, I mean, you're looking at Lamar has not lost in 12 games. You're talking about a Patriots defense that had no answers for him the first time they played. Now, I know every time is different when you come out with Brady and Belichick and company. Every game they have a different strategy. It could be totally different. But based on that, they had no responses for Lamar. And from that point going forward, I don't see any chance for the Patriots to advance to the Super Bowl. I'm going to put my name on that, but as always, I get told to tread lightly every year, and this time I will not, because Fitzmagic is breaking the Patriot mold by going down the field and scoring a game-winning touchdown with 11 seconds left, because he's bleeping Fitzmagic. Oh, that game was just off the rails. Speaking of off the rails, the big decider of the playoffs that we had this weekend came on Sunday night football. We didn't expect to see Miami and New England, but you knew if you watched 49ers and Seahawks, you were going to get something special. And boy, did we get something special. I mean, we're talking about being stopped at the half yard line to close out a game that would have decided the number the winner of the NFC West. After all that, the NFC West came down to a half yard. The Niners played a better game than the Seahawks, and there is no disputing that. And what ends up happening is you start looking, you come back, it's 13-0 at half, and Garoppolo, you start looking around like, hey, what do we do from here going forward? And Shanahan schematically just starts running the ball, slowing the game down. The Niners score a touchdown after the Seahawks score a touchdown. Keep it the same score, but a 14-point lead with Russell Wilson really doesn't mean anything. So then the Seahawks go down and score, and then the Niners get a touchdown with Mozart. And it's still that 12-point lead, just because the Niners went for two and didn't get it. You still got that 12-point lead, and Seattle is hanging on at that point. And Wilson, as we know, if you give him enough time, he, he plays really well. If you give him an average amount of time, they showed it that Russell Wilson, when he had two and a half seconds to throw was completing 11 of 14 for 106 yards going into the last drive. I'm sure that number went up because the 49ers just blitzed him the whole time. And they blitzed him. He had no chance because his offense...